We bless you, Redeemer. Rokata Yadaba Shigota. Zonta Dadabaya. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mandala Baba Baba Babu. Shana Daba Uskiada. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory, Holy Ghost. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Zokata Yaba Baba Babu. Shigota. Lord, we bless you this morning. We give you praise, great God. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit that, Lord, even as your word comes forth this morning, you will take total charge. I pray for your people hearing the sound of my voice that, Lord, they will not be the same again. May the hand of God rest upon your life as I bring them your word this morning in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. It's always a joy and a privilege Every single time I have the opportunity to bring in God's word, I don't take it for granted. I don't. I don't take it for granted. Because I know God is up to something. God is up to something. Someone reached out to me and called me in the night. And I responded. And the person said, man of God, do you know this sleep? Don't you sleep? I said, I sleep. Just that I don't sleep that that long amen there is an assignment that god has commissioned into our hands the salvation of souls a friend of mine went to louisiana because of the the crisis the the storm that happened in, in louisiana and so the 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 job that he does they deal with things like disaster reliefs and stuff like that so when that whole thing happened in louisiana he went to Louisiana. They sent him there to work. He's also a pastor. Then he has a job. Praise God. And so I reached out to him on the phone. I, I didn't even know he was in Louisiana. I reached out to him on the phone. And he told me he was in Louisiana. He went there because of the, 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 the storm and stuff like that. So he was walking there. And of course, I remember a great man of God in, in the state of Louisiana. One of them, a great man, Jimmy Swaggart, which I love so much, I honor, I respect. He's a father of the faith, whom the Lord has been using mightily up till now. And I remember seeing his classics, his crusades, way back, you know, the videos of, the, of his crusades back in the 80s. And you would see the Lord would fill stadiums, I mean, stadiums upon stadiums. So I was asking him, what is the spiritual climate over there in Louisiana? How is Christianity over there? He said, man of God, the gospel has not yet been scratched. In other words, he was saying, there is still too much work to be done as though nothing yet has been done. Irrespective of the great exploits by this great man of God, and of course the Lord used them mightily to do great things, but my friend told me there is still so much to be done that you cannot even be conscious of what has been done already. There is still so much to be done that you cannot even recognize what still needs to be done. Hear me, child of God. You see, one of the regrets of all eternity, even if you make it to heaven, hear me, being in heaven doesn't mean you will be joyful. Doesn't mean you will be satisfied. No. Bible says there will be some people that will be saved like one running out of the fire how does someone runs out of the fire you see if you are in your house today for example and suddenly you see smoke smoke everywhere and the door is closed and you don't know where the smoke is coming from then you now see fire you now see fire and there is smoke all in, in the whole house you will not be thinking about the money you kept in your box you will not be thinking about your certificate you will not be thinking about your computer your laptop your your tv screen you will not be thinking nothing like that the only thing that will be in your mind you will be even though you can't see because of the smoke you will be you will be struggling to make your way to the door though you cannot see because of the smoke and the fire you want to quickly rush out of it you want to save yourself so you will be touching the walls of the house to trace where the door is so you can escape that will be the only thing 
that will be in your mind. And in that process, you could, while struggling to make out the door, some of the fire may touch you, but you will not bother. At that point, you will not even feel the pain of any fire touching you. Hello? You want to quickly make your way through the door. You, you, you won't even feel the pain at that time because your adrenaline is up. As soon as you struggle and you get to the door, you won't open it so fast and run out. So in that process, your clothes may get burnt, part of your hand may get burnt, part of your legs may get burnt because maybe you, you might have stepped on some charcoal, hot charcoal for example, hot fire, but you just want to make it out of the door. So when you make it out of the door, that and you now know you are alive and you're safe, then you turn and look back in the house, to the house, and you begin to regret the things you've lost. Now you have some, you may not even realize that you have some wounds because of the fire. You may not even realize it because your adrenaline is still so high. It's later you will realize, oh my God, I burnt my hand, I burnt my leg, my clothes was burnt. Hello, you have been saved like one running out of the fire. Everything you worked for was burnt. Your life savings burnt. You didn't escape with anything. You struggled, you managed to save your life. Bible says there are lots of people who will be saved like one running through the fire. Like one running through the fire. They will make it to heaven like one who ran through the fire. Getting to heaven, looking back, then they begin to regret the, the things they have lost. The life they lost. You, you, you will get there and then you begin to regret how you spent your time while on the earth. You see, so the regret of all eternity will be to get to eternity and realize you would have done more for God. I'm telling you. Because when you get to eternity... Dollars will mean nothing to you. Then you see how you invested a whole chunk of your life. Only about dollars. And not the purpose of God. A lot of people that may eventually make it to heaven. Will be regretting. Will be. I've come to the place I have realized some scriptures. Over and over and over and over again. The only thing that can give eternal satisfaction. Is a life well spent for God. It's a life well spent for God. I sit with my friends. And they're talking to me. Oh, I want to buy this house here. Hmm. I want to get this 2021 version of this car. The one they are driving is very good, it's very okay, it's comfortable. But I want to get this 2021 version. S someone will be spending hours on the internet. Spending hours on the internet just looking at cars. Looking at cars. Mercedes, Toyota, Infinity. Looking at all these cars. Looking at the new brand, the, the 2021 version. Hello? Some people will even go and trade their, their cars for, 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 for a newer version and begin to pay the car loan every single month afresh. Always want to get something. Always want to satisfy the flesh. Always. So I see my friends and they're talking about, I want to get this one, I, I want to get that one, I, I want to get this one. And 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 what about you? What what kind of what, what do you want? And I tell them I, I, I want nothing. I desire nothing. I'm not trying to have a nice car, the best car. Good, no. Thank God if God provides, it's not a sin. But I'm not gonna take the least of my energy to invest in that. I'm not gonna take the least of my strength to invest in that. I'm not going to take the list of my time to invest in that. I don't, go, I, I don't have the time. 
There were nations to touch for Christ. There were lives to change for Christ. A few weeks ago, I got a phone call. Man of God, we have yet to read offers. Schools have begun. They haven't. They, 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 they cannot go to school. They cannot go to school. Because they lost their parents. In the Ambazonia crisis. Three beautiful girls lost their both parents. Man of God, what can we do? And I'm what it touches my heart. I asked them, please, can I see the pictures? They sent the pictures of the girls. Three young, beautiful girls who just lost their parents in the Ambassador of Christ in Cameroon. They didn't, they didn't pray for that. They didn't desire that. But it's happened to them. I look at these girls, beautiful kids. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do in this situation? And I have to do every single thing to ensure that we got to send them to school. I spoke with my team members. Hey guys, you guys must contribute something. They are in school. We're not just going to sponsor them for this year alone. No. We not only sponsoring them, but clothing them and feeding them. We're not going to just do that for this year alone. We will do that until they graduate from university. If Jesus Christ starts. Hear me, child of God. There is no beauty in anything in this life. None. Absolutely not. So maybe your heart is still being entangled with the cares of this life. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I had a story sometime, I had sometime, some few years ago, of someone who was now who was now celebrating his third billion franc sefa. Hello, in the bank. That's about six million dollars. He called for a party. Called for people to celebrate that he now has six million dollars in his bank account. My brother, look at what people rejoice after. Six million dollars in your bank account at the end of the day, you will be buried. Someone else will spend the money. Money is not to be celebrated in the bank. It is to save souls. It is to change lives. It is to change destinies. There are people who are lying sick in hospitals who are helpless. They are in the best of hospitals, the best of medical attention. They can't even afford to breathe. They have to put oxygen. They have to breathe with oxygen. And yet they got so much money in the bank account that cannot even help them. Hello, child of God. There is no purpose for living. If not for God. Our hearts get so inclined to the things and the cares of this life. Our hearts get so inclined, so attached. I'm not saying you shouldn't have things. I'm saying that should not be your drive. That should not be your purpose. That should not be your goal. You are not in this world today. To, 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 to own this. No, 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 child of God. We thank God for that which you have. But put your priorities right. What are you doing for the salvation of souls? What is that thing that stirs your spirit? That stirs your heart? When my friend told me that man of God in Louisiana, man of God, irrespective of the great achievements of these great preachers we know, it's almost like there is no yet, it's almost like there is no Christianity in Louisiana. I burst out in tears. My spirit was grieved. And I'm asking myself the question. Willie really brought. What is going to be your contribution? Into this life. What is going to be your contribution? Bible says he that winneth soul. Is wise. He that winneth soul. What is going to be your contribution? What is going to be a contribution to the souls of men, to the destinies of men? What would be your contribution? 
And a lot of us, we are running hell scared that we are distracted with, with so many things. Christ told Martha, you are worried and troubled about so many things. One thing is important. Just one. Mary has chosen it. It cannot be taken from her. One thing is important. We get so distracted. We get so troubled with so many things. Hello? Praying in tongues is not yet enough. If the heart is not transformed. It's not enough. Going to church is not enough. Say, oh, I'm a child of God. I've been baptized. No, it's not enough. If your heart is not laid down for the Lord, for the cause of the gospel, it's not enough. It's not. We got to come to the place where nothing else matters but Christ. Yesterday I was talking to us about sin was so nice, yet so wrong. Sin was so nice. I'm going to say continue with that today. Bible says there was a way that appears right unto a man. Hello? But the end thereof, are the ways of destruction. Proverbs 14 verse 12. The question is this, Lord, when I read that scripture, I asked the Lord the question. If the end thereof are the ways of destruction, why then does it appear right to a man? If truly the end thereof are the ways of destruction, why would he even why would it even appear right to a man? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of destruction. So when I read that scripture, I asked God a question. If the end thereof are the ways of destruction, why would it seem right to a man? Then the Lord spoke to me and said, The reason why it seemed right to a man is this because most people are shallow. Shallow. God, what do you mean? Most people are not spiritual. They are superficial. Their roots are not yet plucked in God. Even those who seem to go to church, their roots are not deeply rooted in Christ. Hello? There are some sins you do not commit, not because you really do not want to commit them. Not really because you have been saved from that. But because you don't have the ability to do it. You don't have the, the, the possibility. There are some sins which are expensive. Hello. There are some sins which are what? Which are expensive. You have to spend money to sin those sins. You have to. Go to the casino. Go play all those games. It's expensive. You live your life on wishy washy. You think, oh, you, you want to play, you want to gamble. You see, we're living in a generation today that gambling is no longer a sin. We've made it to appear like that. The scripture says you must not gamble. You mustn't gamble. But the casino, these are billion worth industries. Some of you don't go there, not because you don't want to go there. Your belly is struggling to live, to eat. So where will you take the money to go gamble? But let someone put a million dollars in your hand right now. The next thing you're telling yourself, I want to go to the casino. Hello? Go with me to the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 6 from verse 5. It says, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was altogether evil all the time. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man I will wipe out man completely from the face of the earth. I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Every man and beast and crawling creature and bird of the air. For I am grieved that I have made them all. Hello? 
God says the inclinations of the heart of man was always wicked, was always sinful. Oh, you are praying, God Father. Lord, I have this exam coming coming ahead of me. I have this exam. If I make it in the exam, then I will be promoted in my job. Lord, you are praying. You met the pastor. And you and you fasted and you prayed. Oh God, oh God, I need the exam. I, I need to make it. I need the promotion. Lord, do it for me. You will see what I will do for your kingdom. Lord, do it for me. I will serve you all the days of my life. Lord, do it for me. I will finance the gospel. As I'm promoting my salary increases, I will finance the gospel. And you prayed and you fasted and your pastor laid hands on you. And you made it. You made it through the exam. You had the promotion. There was an increase in salary. The next thing you do, you call for a celebration party. To cook food, let's 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 eat and, and, and jubilate and, and thank God. Hello. But you didn't give thanksgiving to God. You didn't thank Him. You didn't go with the thanksgiving offering to God. Oh, to you, the thanks is, is let people come and let's eat and, and, and celebrate. That wasn't thanksgiving. That wasn't an offering to God. You were calling people to, to see that now you are no more at their level. You've taken another level. Let's eat and let's jubilate. Let's eat and let's celebrate. And, and you guys put the music and you were dancing. It was all the single ladies. Oh, hello. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Let me get and all of that stuff. You, you, you didn't thank God. You didn't thank God. At the end of the day, your lifestyle was upgraded. You changed your wardrobes. No, I, I cannot more drive this car. I need a much more better car. All the promises you told the Lord. Lord, if you give me this, if I make it in this exam and you give me this promotion, Lord, you will see how I will serve you. You will see how I will support missions. All of the promises fly out through the window. What happened? What happened? Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth. And that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was altogether evil all the time. Not just for unbelievers, even in the church. Even in the church. Even among believers, the inclinations of their thoughts was all the time evil. Was all the time towards the flesh. The cosmetic industry is a multi-billion industry. Most believers, are all, our budget is inside. We are the ones causing that industry to rise. The entertainment industry is a multi-billion industry. Most of us, we are the ones causing that those industries to be that so rich. You have internet, you have you have internet TV in your house, you have Netflix, you have all the flicks. Hello. You go watch the sports, go watch the games, no problem. No problem having that, no problem going to watch those things. But why is it that when it comes to the flesh, we, we are good investors? When it comes to the flesh, we are good investors. When it comes to the spirit, we are found wanting. Hear me, child of God. I, I, I bring us a message tonight. You may not accept this. Now, I'm not preaching for you to accept it. I, I've got a message from the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me something. Tell them whatever I tell you to tell them. I don't, I, I don't preach for someone to approve me. To say, oh, you're a good preacher. Or to say, oh, no, 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 no. Paul says, if we, if we were seeking the approval of men, we will not be the ministers of Christ. If we're seeking the, 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 the appraisers of men, the approval of men, 
We will not be the ministers of Christ. I don't come to preach to entertain anybody. I'm not a Hollywood actor. I'm not even a Nollywood actor. Not even a Bollywood actor. Whatever the wood, I am not. I'm not coming to, I'm not a comedian. I'm not coming to make you laugh, to make you scream and shout. Hello. No. I got a message from God. Why is it about, why is it that we invest more in the flesh than to the spirit? No doubt things which are blatantly wrong. Things which are not spiritual. The same right to us. Why? We are too shallow. There is a way that seems right. It appeals right. It seems right to our senses, to our feelings, to our emotions. It seems right. But the end thereof. Oh, you heard? You heard. That is gospel. So you heard? That is musician. It's coming to the US. He will be doing very, very different presentations in different states and you're planning i will go there i will go there i will go there i will go there born again that you you are there i want i have to go i think i said oh my god how much are they paying 150 dollars get um entrance fee only oh okay i i, I thought it was 300 i mean i mean what is 150 what what is what I make one fifty dollars a day. What is one fifty? And you pay ahead of time to secure your space in front. You pay ahead of time to secure your space in front. I can't miss not to see Mabania. I can't. I, I can't miss not to see P Square. I don't have a problem with them. But when it comes to the things of God, you're found wanting. You're found wanting. You're found wanting. What does that tell you? Your inclinations are in the flesh. Your inclinations are in the flesh. Hear me? It's not a difficult mathematics to solve. It's not. A few days ago, I saw a little video of a boxer he nicknamed himself the problem. Uh, he nicknamed himself the problem. So whenever he's going to box, they'll be talking the problem. So the crowds will be jarring, they'll be shouting, they'll be talking, they'll be screaming. He nicknamed himself the, the problem. So he had to have a, a boxing match with this other boxer. So before the boxing, days before that, you know, they would interview him and stop. He would talk how he would beat down the boxer. or He would beat down the other boxer until the other boxer would be saying, man, that guy box real good. So he was busting. He was busting. He even had an, there was even an opportunity where he actually met with the other boxer and they would interview him in front of the other boxer. He looked at, the, at, at that boxer in his face and said, I will, I will beat you up so badly until you be saying, man, that guy box real good. So he was, he was celebrating, he was talking, he was chanting, he was making all that noise. Spending all that energy. They actually follow him in his day-to-day -day life. He will go to places, he will shout, he will scream, play music, open his car, people will be around, he will talk, talk, talk about the, about the fight which is to come. That he will beat the guy, he will mess him up completely. But the other boxer was quiet. He said nothing. He said absolutely nothing. This other guy was all over the place making noise all over the place the final day came they both found themselves in the ring it was time to back to box boy i never saw anything like that the other boxer who was quiet when it was time to fight boy it was like all of hell broke loose the other boxer that was quiet approached that other guy. Bam! Before he realized, the boy fell on him like rain. 
Like rain, like rain, like rain, like rain, like rain. Like rain. He would fall down here, get up like rain. Until he couldn't do anything. He, he was defeated in a, in, in, a, in a grand style. He was wounded all over. What made me laugh was what the commentator said that the problem was solved. <laughs> Hello? That boxer was making noise. He nicknamed himself the problem. That was his name. That, that was the name he gave to himself, the problem. So whenever he's going to box, they will say the problem. The, the, People will make noise. He himself was making noise and was ranting and chanting and talking how he would mess up other boxer. When they found himself in, in the ring, the other boxer fell on him like the latter rain and the former rain coming all together in the same season. <laughs> like rain. He will, the guy fell down, got up like rain. Like rain. Wounds all over. And he was defeated. Then the commentator said the problem solved. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, me, child of God. Yeah, me. It's not difficult to calculate the mathematics of your life. It's not. It's not difficult to calculate where the inclination of your heart is. The, the scripture says, where a man's treasure is, there his heart will be also. And where his heart is, there his treasure will follow also. You cannot separate your heart from your treasure. You want to know where your, where your heart is? Look at where you put your finances. That's where your heart is. You hear me? It's not a difficult mathematics to solve. That quadratic equation will not take me one minute to balance. It will not. It will not. X and Y in that equation, it won't take me long to find out the result. Where a man's heart is, there his finances will follow. There his time will go. Where do you spend your time? How do you spend your time? What are those things that interest you? When you go to the TV to watch, what are those things you, you, you quickly want to watch? It can tell you where your heart is. Let, let's stop deceiving ourselves. Because we have the Bible open be, before us. By our bedside. You have the Bible open. Because before you went to sleep, you, you, you closed your eyes and you prayed. And then you went to bed. You get up, you prayed. And then you get up. So you, you deceive yourself. I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I'm washed by the blood of the Lamb. Because you go to church. How is your life spent? How is your time spent? How is it spent? How is it spent? Paul lived his life for God. Bible tells us in, in about Paul. Let me go there quickly in 2 Timothy. In 2 Timothy, it tells us something very important about Paul the Apostle. Second Timothy chapter 4. It says from verse 9. Second Timothy, sorry, Second Timothy chapter 4. From verse 1. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and encourage with every form of patient instruction for the time will come when men will not tolerate sound doctrine time will come and now the time is that people don't want to listen to sound doctrine now here is the word of god coming going forth people don't want to listen let me come here now and start calling phone numbers and start calling names the crowds will gather hello hello the time will come. I'm not against prophecy. No. I prophesy. But, but, but 
have raised the focus. We have found ourselves entertaining ourselves. We have found ourselves entertaining the people. We are not different from comedians. The only difference is that we stand with, with, with clerical, we stand with the Bible. But everything we do is about entertaining the people, beating their emotions, prophesying what they want to hear, telling them what they want to hear. Man of God, oh, that was why I came. That was why I came. That was no. You shouldn't come to God because you're, you're hoping for something particular. But because you love the Lord and you, and you want to experience a change in your spiritual life. Hello? For the time will come when men will not tolerate sound doctrine. But with itching ears, they will gather around themselves, teachers, to suit their own desires. So they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to meet. They will turn their hearts from God. Who doesn't want to go to a church that... that, that that will be prophesied upon. You will drive a new car. Amen. That man will leave his wife to marry you. Amen. Amen. That friend of yours that 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 is generous of you. Be, before be, you, you will you will bury that friend. Ah. The friend who is generous of you, you will bury that friend. Amen. That's what we've called the gospel today. Doctrine of devils cannot stand the test of scripture. Cannot. 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 Where do you put Romans 12? That says the man of God must not curse. He must only bless. Where do you put that scripture? Where do you put it? The problem today is the church. The problem today are pastors who were never approved by God. The pastors who got into ministry without understanding the heartbeat of God. That's the problem of the church today. That's the problem of society today. For a long time, Israel was without the true God. Why? They were not teaching priests. They were priests, but we were not teaching priests. They didn't know the counsel of God. They were teaching their own things. And there was no law. you go to a church as a homosexual and you keep on going every Sunday and you're, and you're not convicted. You're living with a woman. You've had children. You are not officially married. Not even traditional marriage. Not even traditional marriage. You're not married. But you go to church every Sunday. You address each other, husband and wife. You And you are not convicted. Something must be wrong. Something must be wrong. Something must be wrong. The Spirit of God is chastising the church. It's calling the church into orderliness. Are you hearing me? I don't preach for you to like me. But the Bible says, He that has the Spirit of God bears witness with us that what we are saying is right. He that has the Spirit of God bears witness. Sin was nice, yet so wrong. He that has the Spirit of God you go to church every Sunday, yet there is no transformation of heart. There are so-called believers who are spiritually dead. But they still carry the name believers. They still speak in tongues. But spiritually they are dead. The Lord spoke to the church in Ephesus, in, 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 in Sardis. 
Revelation chapter 3 from verse 1. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, a message to a church. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, the angel of the church of Sardis is talking of the pastor because the word angel means messenger. Leader, the, the messenger over the house of Sardis. The pastor, the leader of that house. John had a revelation and the Lord gave John a letter. Write this letter to the pastor of the church in Sardis. And John wrote it. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis, I write. You have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. You have a name that you are a living church, but you are a dead church. You have a reputation. You're known as a living church. You're known in your society. All you do is humanitarian gestures. The people, oh, it's a nice church. Oh, it's a wonderful church. Because they give to orphans, they give to widows. Giving to orphans and to widows is good. But that is not the priority. It is important. James 1 27. And this is pure and undefiled religion. To keep oneself unspotted from the world. And then to look after orphans and widows. So if you are looking after orphans and widows and yet you are still entangled with the world, yeah. Your giving to orphans and widows is useless. Take it from my mouth. Quote me any day, any time. I have the scripture. Acts chapter 10 from verse 1. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. Did you hear? I take it all over. Acts chapter 10 from verse 1. In Caesarea, you can see there. In Caesarea, Philippi, in Caesarea, sorry, in Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius. A centurion of the Italian court, as it was called. He was a devout. It begins by telling you, before telling you what he did, it began, it began, it begins by showing you his spiritual state. Not just what he did, but it begins by showing you his spiritual state and stand with God. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household he gave arms generously to the people and prayed constantly to god before giving arms to the people he was a devout man who feared god with his entire household hello then he gave arms his arms was an act of worship to god why because of his loyalty to god and to the values of God's word. Hear me? If you don't yet have a loyalty to God. And to the values of his word. And you think you are a good person. Because you give alms. Bible says there is none good. Except the Lord. The alms you are giving. That you are calling Christianity. Is not Christianity. It's humanitarian service. Hello? UN is doing far more than that. But UN is not born again. Are you hearing me? United Nations Organization is... What are you talking about? Any disaster anywhere in the world. UN would, would disburse funds for that. But UN is not born again. This is pure and, and undefiled religion. James 1 verse 27. To keep oneself unspotted from the world. Then to look after the orphans and the widows. You have a name that you are alive. And make a letter to a church of Sardis. You have a name. That you are alive. 
you give arms you look after the poor but you are dead how can a church called by the name of the church the church of Sardis Sardis was a city and a church is identified with the entire city it is to tell you it, not that there were no other churches but that was the main church of that city you cannot you were not you could not live in the city of Sardis and not know about that church before you get into the city you will you will be seeing their billboards all over you will be seeing their billboards all over conferences upon conferences you will see their billboards all over as you are entering the city wow wow you have a name that you are alive but you are dead wake up from slumber wake up from sleep and strengthen the things which you still have for i have not found thy works perfect in the sight of god child of god paul says i charge you in the presence of god and of christ jesus who will judge the living and the dead and in view of his appearing and his kingdom preach the word don't entertain the people preach the word don't ask their opinion preach the word don't seek the approval of the government preach the word don't consider their constitution preach the word someone told me when they brought you you will look for problems you will, you will look for problem and i tell the person that the gospel itself is problematic the, the gospel is problematic if it wasn't problematic christ would not have found himself on the cross it's because what he was teaching was problematic they arrested him and said this man has turned the whole nation teaching wrong things when they arrested christ this man has turned the whole empire teaching all kind of doctrines which is contrary to the state, the Roman state, the, 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 the Roman Empire. Because in the days of Christ, it was the Roman Empire that ruled over the Palestinian region. This man has stirred the people against the Roman Empire. Look at the apostles. Where they were always in jail. That they are preaching things which are contrary to the constitution. They are believers and pastors. You are trying to preach according to the constitution. I don't hear me. That the constitution says abortion is legal doesn't cancel it from being a sin god will judge both the constitution and those that obey that aspect of that constitution so will you will you be careful though please don't talk anyhow please no the gospel is problematic i preach with a consciousness that this thing can land me in jail tomorrow i know that if God wills, it lands no problem. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Child of God, ask yourself the question. Where are you in the mind of God? If you are being put in the balance of God, where will you be standing? I don't come here to deceive you. Those of you who follow my broadcast, our message is the same. The integrity of our message is the same. Go back and watch our videos. I have close to 3,000 videos on, you, on, on Facebook. Go back and watch them. The, 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 the message is the same. The consistency is the same. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Be prepared in season and out of season. You know what it means? And out of season? You preach the word and out of season? They wanted a way to kill Daniel because of his loyalty to God. They passed a decree that for the next 30 days nobody worship any other God except the king. And it seemed, it seemed pleasing to the king Darius that everybody should worship him. 
And then anyone that would not worship him for 30 days would, would be thrown in the lion's den. Hello? That was, that, that was not a favorable season for Daniel to worship God. But Daniel still worshiped God and still prayed and fasted. As, and still prayed three times a day as before. As before that season. With the windows open facing Jerusalem. Daniel will go on his knees. With the windows open, he will not shut the window so that he will not be seen. He, the window was still open. Daniel proposed in his heart. I'm not going to shut down the window so that they now know that I am no more in. Oh, oh let, us, let, us, let, let us use wisdom. Still worship God, Daniel. Still pray, but shut the windows so they will not know. It's wisdom. When you shut the window and you pray quietly in your house, God still hears it. They will not know. Your life will be preserved. Daniel said no. No. He will open the windows as before. Kneel at the window as before. Lift up his hands. As people are passing by the roadside, they are hearing Daniel. They are seeing through the window. Daniel said, I perish, I perish. That is the spirit of the gospel I have believed. Even, even when it was not favorable, out of season, Daniel was still consistent. Oh, they went to the king. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at Daniel. Whom you've made an administrator. He cannot even obey the decree of the king. They had to throw Daniel in the lion's den. The king did not want to throw him there because he loved Daniel. But according to the decree, which was sealed and signed by the king. Daniel had to be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel, came, Daniel was picked up from the window praying. And he kept on praying as he was being taken to the lion's den. He kept on praying. When he was thrown in the lion's den, the Bible says, the angel of God appeared in the lion's den. And shut the mouth of the lions. And told the lions. This one. Is not food. It's not the kind of food you can eat. And the lions. They welcome Daniel. In the lions tent. Daniel will go to sleep. Sleeping on the lions. They became a pillow for him. Child of God. What are you trying to compromise? What are you trying to compromise? What are you trying to compromise? What are the inclinations of your heart? You're trying to save your... You, you, what, what are you trying to compromise? You're compromising your values to God. Your values, you're compromising them. Because you think there's something you want to gain. Because you think, oh, you want to... You, you want, I just want to protect my head. Some years ago, a lady came to me, Pastor, I love the Lord, but I will not come to church again. Because my husband told me, if he sees me in that church again, the marriage is over. Pastor, if this man leaves me, I don't know where to go. My children, I'm not walking. Pastor, I love the Lord. But I can't come to church again. Because if my husband leaves me, where will I go? What are you trying to compromise? Yes, years ago, when I got born again and I was growing in the faith, my greatest persecution came from my father. My greatest persecution. I never saw a man like him. When he roars, he roars like a lion. He will get me beaten on a daily basis. My mom, my mom is, is watching me right now. She knows all of this. The, 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 the ministry I was attending in those days, 
they were aware because my dad came there two times. My dad came to that ministry where I was in those days, two times threatening the leaders that the next time he sees me there, he will set the entire building on fire. And he got me beaten out of that place. He threatened them. Then the next time I see my son there, I'll set the building on fire. He will come home and get me beaten and tell me, don't go there again. Wanky, have you heard? I said, yes, dad, I've heard. The next day, I still go there. I will not come out. I will not close before time. I'll be there till the end. When I come back home. Wangi, where did you go to? Daddy. Where did you go to? Daddy, I went there. He will get me beaten. Took my books, which I've been studying and writing, and put all of them on fire. And I told my dad, Dad, you're working so hard to stop me. Congratulations. But I'll tell you the secret. There is one thing you will do that will stop me. He looked at me. I said, Dad, cut off my neck. You will stop me. But as long as this head is still connected to this neck, Dad, this is a battle. I will win over you. He chased me, I ran. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Sent me out of the house. Refused to pay my fees. Listen to me. Abandoned me in the hospital, sick, lay in the hospital. Why do I share these things? I love my dad. He has repented. I led him to the Lord many years afterward. And he told me, well, son, I just wanted the best to you, but I, I realized that this is a calling from God. I can't stop it. When I was graduating with my PhD, he stood in front of the people and said, My son, I have fought you for many years because I was ignorant. I now release you. Do that which your father has called you to do. Child of God, what are you trying to give up? Paul says, I fought the race. I fought a good fight. I won the race. And I've kept the faith. Let your heart be inclined to God. Let your heart be hooked up to God. Let your heart be hooked up to God. There is no other purpose for living. There is no other purpose for living. Absolutely none. Let nothing catch your attention. Let your focus be Lord, with, the, with, with the Lord. Ask God to do it in your life. To do it in your life. To do it. To do it. Ask God to set you apart. Do it, Lord. Your will be done. Against my own will. Do it, Lord. That should be your prayer. Do it, Lord. Your will be done. Against my will. Oh, do it, Lord. Sing. Listen to me. Child of God. Let God take charge. Just like the prodigal son. If you miss out on God, you'll be like the prodigal son. Oh yes. If you want to do your things your own way, you will become like the prodigal son. But from now on, I want you to do it, Lord. Do it in my heart. Your will be done in me. Against my will. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. 
Mm, your will be done. Against my will. Yes, Lord. Oh, your will, your will be done. Worship God. Sin was right, yet so wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen, my brother. I refuse to be prodigal son. Just like the prodigal son. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. From now on, this is my cry to you. I need you to, I need you to do it, Lord. Mm, let your will be done. Against my will. Against my will. That is Christianity. Not you having your own way. But His will be done in your life. Mmm. I realize your way is best mm, against my will. Oh, yes, I need you to do it, Lord. Do it, do it. Do it, Lord. Your will be done against my will. Do it, do it. I am down on my knees. All I need from you, Jesus. I'm down on my knees. Do <laughs> Worship him and give him praise. As I run up, give him praise. Do it. Your will be done. Establish your kingdom in me. I give you permission to take charge. Worship Him. Give Him glory. Give Him praise. Let your will be done. Mm -hmm. I have a meeting that comes right now on Zoom with Pastor in, in the Philippines. I'm leaving you right now. Worship Him. I promise to follow you. If you lead me, I promise to follow you. Your will be done. Yes, Your will be done. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Do it, Lord. Yeah. Your will be done. Somebody tell him yes. Yes. Security follows my yes. Security will follow your yes. If you tell him yes. <laughs> Worship him. Oh, do it, do it, do it. Do it, Jesus. My brother, my sister. I encourage you. If you're not born again, I want to ask you to pray with me this, this prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Save my soul from today. I will not be the same again. Thank you, precious God. I am born again in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your people. That their lives will not be the same. May the grace of God rest upon their lives. Set their hearts on you, Jesus. Let nothing take them away from you, Lord. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. I need you to do it, Lord. Tell him yes. Because he raised. Huh. Bless you, God. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Savior. Bless you, Redeemer. Whatever you want from me, I'll tell you yes. Whatever you want from me, Lord, I will tell you yes. Do it, do it, do it. Oh, do it, do. Do it, Lord. 
Yeah. Worship Him. Lord, we bless you because you are faithful. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. I pray for your people that their lives will not be the same. That God, no matter how the promptings of sin appear to be right, appear to be nice, that God, we may walk away from it. May our hearts be inclined to you. In Jesus' name. Again, this is Willie Brock, Teacher Gospel, Heroes World Missions. Mandate restoring the message, redefining the ministry, refocusing the church. I want to encourage you to trust God, stand for Him, live for Him. And your life will not be the same. I'll see you tomorrow, 7 a.m. Central Time, live on Facebook. You don't want to miss. I'm going to continue with this same series. Sin was nice, yet so wrong. God bless you. Bye-bye.